Director of Cricket, Jimmy Adams. I'm sure you need no welcome, but on behalf of the squad, welcome to South Africa. Thanks, Dario. <laughs> Just tell us a little bit about your role here with the team. So it's, it's, it's a combination of a few things. Initially, the, the long-term goal, uh, once, especially once we realize that we're going to have two new white ball leaders coming to South Africa, uh, it's the first time that we have separated these roles, and I thought that it was important to be here to meet up with both of them in, in one venue. So there was always a plan to come to South Africa with that as one of the priorities. Um, I also wanted to spend some time with the white ball players and, and just get a feel for what the next 12 to, to 18 months would hold, given we have World Cup qualifiers, hopefully a World Cup in October, and then a home World Cup next year. So to start a lot of conversations between um, myself, themselves, uh, which would eventually stretch to selectors, coaches, so that we, we can get a really good view on what the, what the, I guess what the big picture looks like in terms of what players have planned. Um, there's a lot of cricket being played around the world these days and there, there have been times uh, I, I can say that I think we have been caught out a little bit with not being prepared early enough for players' workloads. So that was one of the, 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 the big priorities. And then obviously with um, regular communication with Andre Coley, the head coach, and his team in Zimbabwe. Um, some feedback came in that they were short on the ground. They, they wanted some more help, assistance on the ground, um, more from a, 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 a batting perspective. So we had meetings with, with uh, the coach, the captain, and um, our high-performance people in, in Antigua. And the feeling was I was already coming here um, so that we could sort of kill all those birds with one stone. So I'm here sort of assisting Andre as well, um, focusing on batting, um, but also to, to really spend some quality time with all the players, not just the white ball players, but I've, I've had quite a few conversations with um, Craig and, and, and his lads over the, over the period, even during COVID, whereas I think it's important with two new white ball captains to, to really, and I think to, to, to meet up with them um, in, in this sort of environment, uh, I think is very helpful for me as well. Um, and just to spend some time with, with, with the, the team, the support team that, that we have here as well, uh, I thought you know, all of that would be a, a good reason to be here doing what I'm doing now. So that, that's basically it in a nutshell. So it's evident that it's a dual role mm -hmm. with your work as director of cricket, yeah, yeah. but with your background in coaching as well and having been a part of a few sessions. Mm -hmm. How are you enjoying it? <laughs> it's interesting. It's, it's, it's always good spending time with players and, and, you know, we've got a really talented group here. Um, the body's still getting used to it. Uh, <laughs> I, I think I'll survive just just about. Um, it's been a tough two days. Uh, the, the, the guys, are, are, we, we've had some bad weather around, as, as you, you, you're aware. But um, the guys are still working. We spent quite a bit of time indoors yesterday uh, and again today. And um, yeah, all, all the support staff putting in the hours, myself included. So it's, it's trying to get the body used to doing some stuff that it hasn't done for, for a little while. And uh, from an organizational perspective, uh -huh. how important do you think it is that you get this contact time, not only with the players, but with the management staff and experience the situation here on the ground? I, th I think it helps. I, I think, to be fair, we, 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 had a, we used to spend quite a bit of time with the, the, the guys, in the, especially in the Caribbean pre-COVID. I think COVID put a, 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 a stop to that for a while. And I, I know it was one of the points that was raised by, by Justice Thompson in, in his review recently that, that that can't be allowed to continue any longer. We need to get back myself, people like myself, or, or high performance managers, the CEO himself. We, we need to, to, to actually start going back to what we did pre-COVID, which was whenever we got an opportunity with the players. To, to actually spend time and listen to them directly, um, preferably face to face. So it, it's something that I would say since COVID has eased, we, we probably haven't jumped on it as, as quickly as we should have. So hopefully this is a start of, of going back to and even surpassing what we used to do pre-COVID. And watching the Zimbabwe series from home and yeah. now coming into the setup, what are some of the positives that you're aiming to amplify? Some of the things that happened there that you want to see continue? Well, it's, it's, 
listen, Dario, at the end of the day, you're 10,000 miles away watching on a, on, a, on a screen, you know. So we played good cricket to win the series. Um, I know rain sort of interfered in the, in the first test. We, we came away with a, a test win and a series win after the second test. I can only go with feedback that I've gotten speaking to head coaches, captains, people on the ground here. Everybody was fairly complimentary about the overall attitude, the, the work rate. Um, so the, the, the responses have been really good, which is kind of what you want to hear on a tour. Um, but it, you know what it's like, it's, it's, it's one thing to, to get second-hand reports, it's another thing to actually be on the ground, seeing, hearing, listening, watching sort of close up within the team environment. So it's, it's, it's been good. Um, uh, an away win is an away win wherever you go in the world. Um, and I think we also had some really good performances in Zimbabwe. Uh, young Chandapal, the captain, um, young Moti bowl pretty well. Um, but just to get the win on, on some pretty, I, I think, easy pace wickets, I think was a good effort from the, from the squad. And I think, you know, we truly believe that, that we can get a, a good result here in South Africa. And, and you know, it would be really good to, to, to have a look at, at people going about their business, trying to accomplish that while we're here. You mentioned that your main focus would be around supporting the batsmen. Mm -hmm. uh, what is the long-term plan in that area in terms of the, the well, team? Well, the, 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 in terms of team management, we, this, this, this arrangement with, with Andre is, is uh, uh, interim, so we plan to, to advertise for the role. Uh, hopefully before the end of this month the, the advert goes out and we want to have a, a head coach in place, uh, I would say uh, early April if, if possible, the timelines that we've been given um, work according to plan. Um, so. There's, a, there's, there's, there's potentially, there could be change in the air, we don't know. But right now, the, the focus has to be on the here and now. The lads are here in South Africa. They, they've come off some good performances in Zimbabwe. We're a team that we believe is getting better. And I think no better challenge right now than, than a team like South Africa, ranked above us. Um, but we, we, we really believe that we can get a result here. So from an organizational standpoint, you yeah. mentioned that impact time with the players will be very important going forward, and it's something that we used to do quite a bit before oh. COVID. Yeah, yeah. So just around the other representative teams of Cricket West Indies, um, what are the plans oh, there? Oh, well, I mean, it's, it's pretty similar. It's, it's, it's about getting uh, as much quality feedback as we can as an organization from the people on the ground. And, and like I said, I think across the board, the thing is, a lot of times because we have women in Antigua, they come to base because of their, their whole setup. Antigua is their base, so it's been fairly easy to get access to them. Um, players, team management, uh, again, under 19s tend to be focused generally. The, the tournament is in St. Vincent, but when we have camps and so on, we, we tend to localize them in Antigua, which, which sort of brings them to us, if that makes sense. Whereas for the senior men's, they're on the road all the time. But what is specific about what is happening here is that we have three tours in one venue. And it was just a convenience. And I'm, I'm coming back specifically to, to this, what we're doing here now. It, it, it was just a convenience of having you, you, all your captains, your white ball players who, there's going to be a bit of an overlap. But also with, with the feedback from Zimbabwe to actually come and spend some time with the, with the test players as well. A few of the test players play across formats and again, just conversations on workload management, where, where do we go in, in the 6 to 12 to 18 months ahead for, for some of these individuals. Um, there's not just Western cricket to think about, a lot of them are involved in leagues around the world and, and we're really keen to ensure that we get what is best, not just for the player, but for West Indies cricket as well. So I, I think having conversations like that face to face, I, I think are generally better than, than trying to do them on Zoom or, or over the phone kind of thing. But to answer your question, it, it's an approach not just for the senior team. You know, it's, it's something that we want to ensure that there is sufficient contact time with all, all the teams that, that come under the West Indies banner, all the support teams that come under the West Indies banner. Hopefully, just to generate the kind of feedback that will lead us to good decisions. 
So you mentioned that this is a holistic approach from Cricket West Indies in terms of ensuring that management gets some contact time with players. But obviously there are other representative teams um, throughout the Cricket West Indies system. Yeah. Yeah. What is being done on those fronts? Well, it's a good question, Dario. I think, I think one of the things that, that we, we're trying to do is, is just create a, a, you use the word holistic, I, I tend to use the word a, a sort of feedback system, a system where we can give people who might not expect to get feedback, like feedback on the ground, so to speak, which we think is, is probably the, 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 the most robust way to give feedback. So I'll give you an example. We had our, we, we've been giving as much support as we can to our, our newest West Indies team, um, which happens to be our under-19 women's team, newly formed. Uh, we've never done a lot of tour, any touring previously with our young ladies in the Caribbean. And we thought that they went to India late last year and, and our high performance manager travelled with them, which was not just giving players support, but giving the support team support as well. Uh, we then followed that up with the Under-19 Women's World Cup. Again, our coach education manager went on that trip for the same reason. The, the, the players have their support, but the support staff need support as well. And it, it's, it's trying to do as much as we can to get the best player but ultimately we're doing it through a process where everybody develops so that the, 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 those who manage those players can get feedback and, and we feel that the best feedback is actually when people have eyes on the ground. So in a sense there's, the, 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 there's a little bit of that I guess here as well. I, I mean I, I will give feedback as and when it's appropriate you know um, but slightly different in that my priorities put a, a few things sort of a little bit above that for, 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 for where I'm here but that is also a part of it um, and it's just trying to grow that culture of, of providing a, a feedback mechanism so to speak so that it's not just players getting feedback we, we, we're part of a, a bigger unit here that is to support people from all different walks who are we hope growing while the players are growing and, and everybody needs good feedback in order to grow. So it's, it's, it's part of a whole sort of developmental approach that spans just players. And um, yeah, hopefully as time goes on, we can keep providing more and more support in these areas because we find at times that, and, and quite rightly so, the players are our product and, and we want to make sure that that product is as, as robust as possible. But the truth is that development happens through teams and, and maybe in the past we've, we've not been as committed to other areas of development within the team you know support staff who, who, who need development as well um, so it's, it's part of that package and hopefully you know the, the role that I have here would, would, would touch on that in, in some ways as well um, so that's part of, yes, I agree with you, that is part of, of an ongoing process. I will be sitting with support team members, you know, head coaches, uh, the, 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 the medical staff as we go along, um, and just, just give observations and, and, you know, get feedback from them as well, because, you know, th these are people who have a lot to give to Western Indies cricket, who've seen a lot. They're on the road almost all year, so th they are actually our eyes for us back in the office and it's, it's really making sure that we mine as much information we can and then using that to make sure that all our processes keep getting stronger and stronger. And just as a follow-on mm. from that, yeah. I want to talk a little bit about the diversity within West Indies cricket, mm -hmm. um, how how the team is made up mm -hmm. in terms of everyone coming from different countries mm -hmm. and coming together to try to achieve whatever the goal at hand is. That must be something slightly difficult to manage at times. Well, it's, it's well, well, uh, having sort of gone through the whole pathway, so player way back when, uh, playing in West Indies teams, both junior and senior. Um, I look at it a little bit differently. I think, I think diversity potentially is strength. Um, there has always been insularity in our cricket, and, and, and it is, it's something that everybody almost accepts. Um, and I, I, I don't think it's a positive thing. But 
our history has shown us that we have had periods where the diversity has really made us world class. And, and it is something that I, not only do I appreciate, but I celebrate it. Because I have, I have seen, I have played in West Indies teams, junior and senior, and those cultural differences, it's amazing what, and I'm being very selfish, what I have seen and been a part of when, when cultural strengths come together to sort of mask cultural weaknesses, you know. Um, and I use the word cultural specifically because in, in any team, strengths cover weaknesses. But, but I think the, the West Indies is, a, is just a unique entity. And a lot of, I think in recent time, we, we, we've, we've tend to focus on the negatives that people perceive when, when you talk about, uh, you know, the, the cultural diversity that we carry. Whereas there are a generation, not just my generation, but the generations before me who, who would probably turn that around and say, well, you know, we, we, we had great success because of the cultural diversity. And, and it's not something that will go away. I, I think it's just a case of how it is managed and, and celebrated and then, in a sense, encouraged.